Hey, welcome, 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 everybody, once again, all my YouTubers, all my viewers, all my subscribers. I got another good one, yet scary one for you today. But first, I want everybody, everybody out there to join me. Become intrigued as I case read the 411 baffling unsolved cases of hundreds of random people from clusters all over the globe who mysteriously vanished without a trace and are either never seen ever again or found hundreds of miles away from their last known location deceased under weird circumstances that would mean in on or near bodies of water all bodies of water so today my friends today's story is about a young man named William Hurley he went missing on 1008 09 at 8 30 p.m. in Boston, Massachusetts. He was 24 years old when he vanished. Well, I'm going to say, I, well, at this point I can say disappeared because he was found dead. But, you know, anyway. Okay. Now, according to what David Paletta said in the book, I present another case where everyone surrounding this young man indicated that he could be the best described as Mr. Reliable. He was never late for work, always made his appointments, and was a trusted friend to many. William Hurley was raised in Nashville, North Carolina, and joined the Navy out of high school. For the majority of his military career, he was stationed in Florida. In 2007, his military group was sent to Boston. It was while on shore leave that he met the love of his life, Claire Mahoney. On St. Patrick's Day, of all days, Claire and William were living together when he, uh, when her life t uh, took a turn that nobody would expect. William Hurley liked to be called Will. He was living with Claire in Quincy, Massachusetts on October 8, 2009. He awoke at 4.30 a.m. Now, just so you know that the times in this story are very important so pay attention and okay you see he awoke at 4 30 a.m. and went to his greenskeeper job <clears throat> at the Western Country at the Western Country Club in Western Massachusetts uh, his uh, Will's best friend at work was Brendan Venti Brendan invited Will to go with him to a Boston Bruins hockey game that that night at TD Gardens Arena at 100 Legends Way in, in Boston. They were playing the Anaheim Ducks with the game starting at 7.30 p.m. At the end of the first period, Will was exhausted. Apparently he had a lot he had a lot going on that day, running around, running errands and stuff like that, or whatever the case may be. Or maybe he didn't. Listen to what I'm saying about all the, the, the key points in this in his uh, in his profile. Okay. Uh he told Brendan uh he was going uh to call Claire and have her pick him up. Will left the arena and called Claire and she drove to the to the area of the arena. When she was two blocks away, she called Will and asked uh, asked his uh, exact location. Claire could hear someone yell out 99 uh, uh, Nashua Street. Yeah, Nash uh, 99 Nashua Street. Uh, it was just west of the arena, and Claire was less than a minute away. Will told her that his phone battery was about was about dead. The phone stopped operating at, at, at this point. Seconds later, Claire turned the corner onto Nashua Nash Nash Street and Will wasn't there. She drove around honk honking and yelling. No Will. 
she parked and walked around the area for an hour. She eventually gave up and went home to contact the Boston uh, and Quincy police. Uh, she was told that she'd have to wait 24, 24 hours before they take an official report. The following day, Claire... Well, you know, I never understood that part where they said you have to wait 24 hours before you uh, file a missing persons report. That, that never made any sense to me, but that's the law. Oh, well. Okay. Um, the following day, Claire <clears throat> filed a formal missing person report uh, with both police agencies the following day claire and will's mom worked together to pass out posters in the area on monday boston police um put two police boats into the clip into the charles river to search for to search for a body they found nothing in the water the police did report they found will's cell phone smashed to pieces but they never stated where it was found uh, there were several friends and family in and in family interviewed about Will's disappearance. The most common statement was that he was stunning that it was stunningly out of character. Uh, on October 14th at approximately 2:30 p.m., a boss uh, I mean I'm sorry 2:30 a.m. a Boston police officer was on routine patrol near the Suffolk County Jail on Nash on Nashua Street and saw a body in the river it was recovered 25 feet from shore they found keys on the body and will's wallet jake war uh, jake wark a spokesperson for the suffolk county district attorney's office made the following statement in an article that appeared on october 15 2009 police divers scoured the river after hurley was reported missing but not until Wednesday did they find the body. It appeared to have been in the water, excuse me, for a couple of days, the work said. Let's get the dates correct. Will disappeared on October 8th at approximately 8.30 p.m. He is found in the water deceased on October 14th at 2.30 a.m. Uh, he had been missing for five days and six hours. The authorities stated that he had been in the water for two days. Where was Will for those uh, first three days and six hours? Authorities stated that <clears throat> they did not believe that there was any indications of foul play and no injuries on the body. After five years, I still could not find any online source indicating uh what was the cause of what was the cause of what the cause of death was this case uh, uh epit epitomizes yeah epitomizes the ridiculous way society and the news accept deaths uh, in the water no deaths in water uh let's see there is no way will was going to run away from claire as she was just moments away. I think the issue with the cell phone going dead is too timely to ignore. Uh, think of the number of times a victim has gone missing and witnesses have lost contact because of the cell phone cutting off the signal. I would also like to know where authorities found Will's cell phone. Okay, now see with this case is very, very weird because okay all of a sudden the man is exhausted 24 years old you would think he'd have plenty of energy at that age like myself when i was 24 i mean i had a lot of energy i would i wasn't just getting exhausted unless i had a pretty heavy day running up and down the street you know running errands or hanging out with friends now earlier in the story it was saying how him and his best friend his best friend invited him to a game okay so that pretty much was all he did except for the fact that um let's see okay that says here will and hurry he liked to be called will uh he was living with claire da, 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 da. he awoke 4 30 a.m and went to his greenskeeper job in western county uh the western county country club okay so Okay, he's a greenskeeper at the country club, so that means he took care of the grass, you know, he probably, and we're talking about a country club, so a country club has a lot of grassy areas, 
and the um, uh, the square feet of the uh, the property was probably pretty huge. So I can almost understand that he was he was exhausted because he had a pretty long day at work. So that part there takes care of the whole I'm exhausted part. So yeah, he was he was working a long he was working long hours at the country club. So I can understand that. Cause see that happened around 4:30 a.m. Okay, now when his friend invited him to that game. The game didn't start until 7.30 p.m. So he worked from 4.30 to whatever time he got off to make it to the game at 7.30 p.m. Okay. So that part right there, the gap in the workload, yeah, I can understand that. Okay. So after he gets tired, he calls his, his uh, girlfriend, tells her to pick him up. And while they're on the phone, uh, he was saying how his phone went dead. So between 7.30 and 2.30 a.m., he vanishes. Now, think about this. Some person in the background, while she was on the phone with him, yells out uh, 99 Nashua Street, or Nashua Street. And that was between the hours of 7.30 p.m. and 2.30 a.m. So, after the phone went dead, he just vanishes without a trace at that point. Okay, so nobody saw him disappear. Oh, nobody was paying attention because they didn't know the man. But when he was asking where he was at, obviously he said it loud enough for someone to yell out the name of the street. Okay, so the mystery is what happened to him after the phone line went dead. So somewhere between that point when the phone line went dead and when he was found in the water, something grabbed him or made him disappear or cloaked him to where nobody in that area was going to see him. Then all of a sudden they smash his phone, so the evidence of him being on the phone or where he was would not be found through the triangulation of the signal at that point. So from there to from 2:30 a.m. to when the body was actually found, they found his wallet and his keys on him. Now, the big part of this whole situation is. There is no evidence to state what happened to him, where he was, where he went, and how he ended up in the water. Because judging on what it says here, there was no cause of death. Meaning there was no puncture wounds on the body at all. No bruises, no nothing. Just a dead body in the water. So it goes back to the supernatural. And all the weird shit that goes along with these cases. The stuff that you come up with, as a matter of fact. Now... There was no cause of death on or in the body. Granted. Why? The why is the big part of that whole case. Why was there no cause of death on the body? Some people have told me that that you know they could have had like a, a heart attack and some heart attacks are undetectable. Da, 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 da. Okay, this was a healthy young man, 24 years old. There was no list of any problems that he may have had in the past of heart problems or any other type of illness that he may have had or any kind of illnesses that he may have come in contact with. Okay, so with that being said, there is a predator, an unseen predator, and I don't mean a person. I mean an unseen entity that likes to take people under the... Um, guys of a cloaking power he cloaks the person and he takes them or it takes them it sucks out all their energy or retrieves their soul from their body and he and it eats it or drinks it or whatever the case may be and leaves them marked for dead in the water now this thing is clever enough to add all of these extra uh, criteria to the findings of these bodies okay they will sh it, what this entity does it shows you what it can do but it also shows you that it can do all of it all that it does without leaving any evidence whatsoever that means fingerprints or any indication or what did it that is a very clever entity because like I said in my last post or actually not so much my post but in a closed group about missing people I told the last person that this person is clever or this entity is clever it knows the human psyche and it knows the human race alone better than we are than we know ourselves it knows how we think it knows how we it knows how we react it knows how we 
tend to not believe the unbelievable or the unexplained. That is the reason why I can get away with what it get away what it gets away with because we are too quick to say, "Oh, that's not real. There's no such thing as this and that and the other." If anybody killed my son, it was a human, or they, he was abducted by a human. It was, or he or she was kidnapped by a human. They would never, in their lifetime, believe that some sort of unknown entity that is able to cloak itself at any time was able to do this. It would never believe that it's coming from some sort of uh, astral plane-like world where they operate on a mental level that surpasses our own it can do things that we can't do it can cloak itself it can travel from one dimension to another you know i heard about this on a broadcast on coast to coast am where these entities operate on a level that surpasses our own and it comes and they come from some sort of like astral plane like uh dimension that is like the astral plane, but totally different. And the way they can transport from one place to another is on a on a spiritual, uh, a high ex spiritual level where it can just dematerialize. It operates on a spirit-like level. You know, it's it's weird. They can dematerialize and rematerialize somewhere else. It can transport itself from one end of the galaxy to another, and just seconds it, it can use ufos that are not powered that are not occupied by ufo by by alien entities it's a lot of stuff and i may post that on my next uh on my next uh, uh video which hopefully i can do today before i have to go to work so um but yeah very rare case people very weird case and um if you like what i've been talking about you know what to do like and subscribe below Hit me up with a comment. Hit me with them thumbs up. You know what to do. So uh, tell your friends about me because I guarantee you everything that I speak is all factual. But also the theories that I speak of are factual as well. The only problem is, is because we have been brainwashed by the government. Okay, We are taught to only believe what they want you to believe. We are taught to believe that these things are nothing but folklore, myth, or fairy tales. Okay? We need to get away from that, folks. We need to realize that what we have been taught to believe is nothing but a fable. They are all real. Because there are things about this world, about this planet that we have been living on since the day we were born, that we are not, that we're not familiar with. We don't know anything about what we do know about is in our minds is just a story or a fairy tale or a um, a uh, mytholog uh, mythological legend you know it's, it's just none of this makes any sense i am a firm believer that everything that we know of as fairy tales or whatever the case may be is all fact okay once we get away from that we can solve these cases david Paletis does a very good job with the facts and we go from there we use the facts in these cases to come up with the theories that are actually fact. These theories are what can solve these cases. The only problem is everybody looks for they everybody looks for um, proof that all this stuff that we talk about is real. Oh, you know, but we don't need proof. The proof is right there in the book. I mean, I mean, not so much that we don't need proof, but the proof is right here in the book and what David Paletti says in his words. Okay. The only problem is we sit there and be trying to figure it out so much. We, the first thing that comes in our mind that says it looks like someone just stole his soul because it's we got a dead body here with no puncture wounds, no stab wounds, no bullet holes, no strangulation marks, no nothing. In the inside of the body, no indication of any kind of trauma. Okay, and the body is pristine with no clothes on, nothing but the underwear. That don't seem weird enough to you to make you think otherwise that it couldn't have been a uh, it couldn't have been a person that did it, a human from this plane. It's probably a human from another plane or another entity of some sort. It's an entity that can make itself invisible. I can guarantee you. Now, the only problem is the feelings we get from that type of entity where we feel like we're being watched or we feel like there's a, a presence near us that makes us feel creeped out that's what they are 
I don't know. I mean, it could be. I believe that. But as for you to decide, my people, that's why I'm here. I give this information to you so that you can open your mind and open your eyes and see that there's something more than just human capability going on here. It goes way beyond what we already know. Okay? Now, this talks about entities that can. I've heard of alien abduction uh, stories where a person, when a person is taken away by an uh, alien uh, entity, they can pass them through the wall and up into their ship. Okay? Think about this. Elisa Lamb disappears and is found inside of a tank, a water tank, on top of the hotel that she was staying in. Okay? The compartment that opens up to get inside the tank was too small for her body to fit in. So that would mean whatever took her uses that same ability that aliens have to phase you through the wall. It used that same ability to phase her through that tank and just place her in there. Think about it. If you are very well uh, knowledge on alien abduction and know some of the characteristics that carry that 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 are carried along with that you would see that they also have that ability to phase people through solid mass so this entity or whatever uses uses that same ability or that same technology to do this to phase people through solid mass and place them in areas that was very that was impossible for them to get to and I think they do the same thing in the woods now I've also mentioned to my uh, one of one of the guys on the, one of the people on that um, on that uh, that closed session about missing people, I told him about these um, uh, these uh, creatures called the Kakamora. They were showcased in that movie, uh, the Disney movie um, Moana, and the Kakamora are actual folkloric creatures from ancient Polynesian mythology. Okay. Um, they're creatures that that um, they protect certain forests, okay. And the way people are disappearing in national parks and national forests, these are certain forests, okay, in national parks with certain names. You know, they all over the place. But these are certain. I'm pretty sure there's forests all over the place. But these are certain forests that are picked by these creatures, okay. You got Yosemite, and you have all the other national parks all over the world okay you got Yellowstone okay people disappear there too well one of the main ones is Yosemite National Park okay now these creatures also have a big problem with humans and they eat the humans you know when they get hungry and they don't think twice about it now do they leave bone fragments behind it wasn't said that they do that but they did say that they do eat humans when they get hungry and they have a negative uh, attitude towards humans because I'm, a, I'm imagining that the reasons why is because you know they obviously don't protect nature the way they should think about it you got humans cutting down trees in the, in, the, in the rainforest to build like you know buildings or whatever you got people cutting down trees in residential areas you know like over here there's a big old wooded area right on, on the side of the this uh, main street near where I live at and it's up for construction bought by a company and I would think they, they could at least leave the trees there you know just like in my the last place I lived at there was a big row of trees in an area on the main road, a place a road called Satellite Boulevard, and those trees have been standing there for years, ever since I had moved down here, and all of a sudden that whole area got cleared out, and then next thing you know there's a Coles there, and well it was it was a shopping center, it was a Coles, uh, Target which is now out of business, and then there's a, a Babies R Us, all that stuff, all for what, just because they want to make some money off of some land that could have stayed there as trees. You know, I mean, I know people need places to live, but how many shops do you need to build just so you can make more money? But the construction, uh, the construction world is very lucrative when it comes to money, when it comes to stuff like that. So naturally, they're gonna do what they do to make money. But anyway, I want to see if I can find that closed session uh, talk that I had, and I can tell you exactly what I was saying about that.
Okay, give me one second here. Let's see. Find that closed session. Ah, here we go. Hmm. Huh. Got some new information on there. Let's see. I gotta find that conversation. When I find that conversation, I'll be good to go. Let's see. This may take a while. <laughs> okay, um. Anyway, I, like I said, I talked to him about that. And, um. He was amazed at that uh, information that I gave him. Uh, so. Let me see. This is going to take a while. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I don't want to waste a lot of this here on that. But, uh. Oh, here we go. I got it. I got it. Okay. Now, like I said, it's about the, uh, some creatures called the Kakamura. They are known to be protectors of certain forests, and they typically have bad intentions towards humans and have been known to eat them when they are hungry. Now, these are similar to goblins in European mythology. Okay. Now, these Kakamura uh, creatures, like I said, come from ancient Polynesian um, folklore. But, uh, you know, so the the creatures mentioned and you, you saw in that movie, that uh, Disney movie Moana, is true fact. You know, these are actual, you know, mythology, mythology um, myth, myth. <sighs> these are actual creatures of Polynesian mythology, like I said. But anyway, so that right there gives me an idea of how these people are being eaten. Okay, now these, it doesn't happen with everybody, but there are a few cases of bone fragments being found in areas where they were probably last seen because I think they saw their gear sitting on a log somewhere, like as if they were doing inventory. Uh, and then, of course, there's the, um, uh, like I said, Jerry Atadero case. Same with him. He was eaten. And it wasn't by no mountain lion or any other creature you, I could think of unless it was eaten by a Bigfoot. I don't know if Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot does stuff like that. There have never been any cases of them. Uh, I mean, they they do capture live uh, stock to eat or whatever, like deer and stuff like that, or maybe raccoons. Wild, you know, wildlife that be in the woods. That there also have been, you know, skeletal remains of animals found in certain areas of the forest and everything. I saw that in um on this show called uh, Alone on the History Channel. Now. If it was was it placed there in a stage, I don't know. But still, the fact still remains these people are turning up dead. But sometimes the ones that are found, all you find is their bones. And I'm talking about one tiny bone, like Jerry Atadero's Jerry skull cap, the very top of it. So obviously, this creature was able to place the entire body in his mouth and bite down on it and leave nothing but the skull, it's at the top of his skull. So it peeled off the skin. Okay? How it was able to peel off the skin and just leave the top of his cranium, I don't know. But it, it's a very prolific eater. I mean, we talking about you just devour the entire body and leave nothing but the bone. No blood, no nothing. No brain matter. Nothing. Nothing but the bone. So it was like it was wiped clean. Okay? So think about that, folks. Think about the fact that this creature, these creatures may be, you know, in on this whole situation when it comes to... Uh, people disappearing in national parks okay now I'm just giving you a little tidbit of information so if you want to look that up go right ahead you'll find it Kakamura they eat humans okay they don't like humans bad intentions towards us so if we go into the forest and we're not respecting nature itself by marking trees so that we can find our way back or cutting down trees or using technology when you can use the elements or use or do the same thing that the indians did you know you tracked your way through the through the forest or through the woods by just using nature itself but they feel like they are tainting nature 
which is probably the reason why they're taken. And probably also the reason why their gear is always missing along with them. I'm just saying. You know, they probably don't want you taking pictures of, you know, like, okay, like the uh, um, Stacey Aris case. She used a camera to take in the beauty of the forest when she could have just used her eyes, which is probably the reason why her camera was taken along with her. Okay, so these people are obviously being punished by creatures of nature. Okay, the Kakamura, for that matter. You know, I don't know. That that's just one of my main theories. I think that's the reason why people are being taken because they are not respecting nature. You can use nature alone to to view the wonders of the forest. You don't need technology to do that. You don't need camping equipment. I'm pretty sure creatures like that built homes out of you know, leaves and twigs and stuff like that. But no, you want to bring in camping equipment like canisters, you know, for food and water and uh, artificial housing like tents and stuff like that. Maybe to them, that's disrespectful. I don't know. But that seems to be the case here. If you think in that area. I know most people don't, but you need to. But anyway, I got to go. It's been 30 minutes. I didn't mean to take up too much of your time. So, always important. I will always come back with more stories. And I will read another one pretty soon uh this one is going to be about eugene lossick that's going to be my next story so stay tuned for that one anyway i gotta go i got some things i gotta do so as always aloha mahalo and uh peace out guys be safe be blessed have a great day it's nice and sunny it's beautiful love it <laughs> bye